Thank you. 
of September. It's a Wednesday. Uh, we'll have witnesses uh, as we get the details of it available to you. And uh, if you remember uh, Franklin Graham's father, Billy Graham, used to have crusades that really empowered and, and engaged the local churches here. When we met over Madison Square Garden and had the rallies, uh, in those days we uh, need a similar revival uh, to get us engaged in public policy here at this period of time that we're in right now. So we'll keep you informed, but uh, if you're interested at all, if you'll contact myself uh, in the next few weeks, we'll, uh, we'll fill you in. Uh, hopefully we'll have some printed uh, material and information for you as well. Thank you.
let's invite Thomas up to do the vault of worship. Lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up the ancient doors.
uh, modern day vernacular, why are you stressing, what are you stressing about? So bent out of shape is something that sometimes we all get involved in, so I have a few things for you. Do you know what these are? These are spoons, right? So God is great, because I have three of them. Here you go. One for you. One for you. And one for you. Now what can you do with this type of spoon? What do you think? Can you scoop ice cream with that? What do you think? Yeah? No? We could try, right? What about soup? Do you think you could eat soup with that? You might, right? Good. What else? So this is a great example of being bent out of shape because there are some of the things that I would normally do, like eat ice cream. If I had a spoon like this, I could try to make it work, but it'd be a little difficult. And if I had a spoon like yours, I could try to eat some soup, as you showed me. I, I probably could make that work too, but it'll be a little hard. But one thing about being bent out of shape is that um, there's a Bible story that talks about a woman, a woman who had been bent over, and her back was kind of arched in this way. And what happened was she was sick for a lot of years, and she was bent out of shape in the sense that she needed Jesus to heal her. So one day on a Sunday morning, kind of like today, she came into worship with everyone, and she was bent over. And Jesus told her, he touched her, and she had been sick for about 18 years, the scriptures tell us. And he touched her, and he laid hands on her, and he prayed for her, and her back was straightened. See if you can straighten your spoon. Let's see. Can you straighten your spoon? Try. Nice. Pretty strong there. Good job. Can you straighten yours? Nice. Can you straighten your spoon? You just make, you just make it straight. Can you pull it? Nice. We can help. Here you go. That makes it straight. So show everyone your spoon. And you know what? The Lord is telling us today, there are some things that we really don't have to be so bent out of shape about. Because there are things that when we come to God's house, not just on Sunday morning, but when we come and participate in worship, in mission work, as we heard earlier, and just loving one another, forgiving one another, some of these things that we are bent out of shape about, if we allow God to take care of it, how does he straighten us back out? Good job. Good job. Can you give them a hand? They did a great job. So before you go back, I'm just going to say a prayer for you, okay? If you join me in bowing your heads. Lord, we thank you for your three young people who you have gathered here. We thank you, Lord, for the message that you've given us about not being bent out of shape, but always remembering that you love us, that you forgive us, and we should do the same for our brothers and sisters. So we ask that you would bless these children today and let them remember this message for years to come. It's in the name of the Father, Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we say, Amen. 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 Can you hold on to these for me for a little while? I might need you again during the sermon, okay? Can you hold on to that? Good job. Our next hymn is hymn number 562, Be Thou My Vision.
join me as we continue to prepare our hearts for the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for another day to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the opportunity for us to be able to worship together as Christians here at First Reform Saddlebrook. We thank you for the sweet spirit that abides in this place. And we ask now that as we listen to what you have to say to us from heaven, that you would speak to our hearts individually, speak to us as a congregation, and speak to us as a community of believers. Again, we thank you for the opportunity, and we appreciate the fact that you are our vision continually still here on earth until you come again for your people. It is in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, God's people together said, Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. And I'll be reading in your hearing from the New Living Translation. And the New Living Translation says, One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. There are six days of the week for working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, you hypocrites, each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage from Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things he did. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Why are you all bent out of shape? Why are we all bent out of shape? I love sharing with our children right before a sermonic message, only because they always give us a good example of what we look like. Yeah, today is a little humid. Evelyn and I discussed how we were driving and all of a sudden a downpour of rain came and then there was bright sunshine. Is that something to be bent out of shape about? How about we rejoice over the fact that we were actually able to wake up this morning? We were actually able to have our minds stayed on Jesus. We were able to come into the house of the Lord, albeit in the fellowship hall, but we're able to worship together. And wherever the Lord's people are, we should never take for granted the fact that we are able to worship together in spirit and in truth. Now, the sermon title is not, Why Are You All Been Out of Shape? But I feel like we should get that out of the way, just initially. And sometimes the cares of this life, and sometimes the things that go on within our lives, within our families, our personal lives, even sometimes within the life of the church. Every once in a while, it takes us for a turn. Every once in a while, we do get kind of bent out of shape. But today's sermon title is simple. It simply says, straighten up and give God praise, which is what we come into God's house to do. Today's scripture lesson is one that is probably familiar to many of you. But the story of the woman who was crippled, who was crippled for 18 years, who was in the Lord's house on the Sabbath day, she was being harassed almost by those people within the synagogue, the scribes and the Pharisees who were so pious, who were trying to do everything by the book, everything according to the law. And for those of us who are Christians, we understand and we have a better understanding now that Jesus told us and he was specific. He didn't come to abolish the law, but he came to fulfill it. Today's sermon title, Straighten Up and Give God Praise, is one that speaks to me because we do live in a day. We do live in a time. We even live in the time of Christianity and of the coming again, on the dawning of the coming again of Jesus Christ. 
And one thing that I've been reminded of is that I need to get back to basics. God's people need to get back to basics. Those things that the world say we should be all bent out of shape about, the presidential election, the Zika virus, we could go on and on and on. We have to be mindful as Christians constantly. We have to remind ourselves that we have to get back to basics. Now that doesn't say that we don't pray according to the word of God and how he tells us to pray. It doesn't say that we aren't watchful, that we're prayerful for those things in our world that go on, that we don't pray for our families and our children. But what it does say is that at the end of all of those cares and concerns of the world, that we often have to remember that we have to straighten up and we have to give God praise. And this is the reason why we come into God's house on the Sabbath day. The scripture says, on the Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. Because he was Jesus, we understand that his measure of discernment was out of this world. And because he is God, he knew right away what her issues were. She had been doubled over for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. One of the things that we need to know as Christians is that no matter how we come into God's house, no matter how we come in before it's time to worship, God understands, God knows, and he cares about the things that plague us, about the concerns that we have, about health concerns, about illnesses, about finances, about our family. God knows all of these things. But even in the midst of that, the scriptures tell us that the woman came out into the house of the Lord, even in her bent over state. She was able to straighten up, even if not physically, but in her mind, to come out to give God praise. Verse 12 says, when Jesus saw her, he called over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her, and instantly she could stand straight. And how she praised God. How often have we been bent out of shape coming into God's house, going to work, going home? And when we get to those destinations, sometimes we want everybody to know I'm in a bad mood and I want you to know about it. I get into my house. I don't have a husband, but I'll pretend I do. I get into my house. My husband's at home. I've had a terrible day at work, and I want him to know how I felt. I get into my house I, with my pretend husband, and I want him to know how I felt. And then there we have children, and I want them to know I've had a bad day, and I've all been out of shape. And the truth is, when we're bent out of shape about things, we want everyone else around us to suffer. We want everyone else around us to know it. Jesus is saying that that doesn't have to be your story. Understand that when you come into God's house, when you come into his presence, when you come for prayer, when you come to share with your brothers and sisters in Christ, understand that Jesus is already present by the power of the Holy Spirit and understands what we all go through. He understands that it's a little warm in here this morning. But he's still grateful that you came out to give him praise. The woman who was bent over for 18 years, we learn later on in the story that we understand that, um, I'm sorry, I got a little distracted. <laughs> we understand in the story as time went on is that she was a daughter of Abraham. She was one who worshipped God. She was one who worshipped God, the God of Israel. And what Jesus was saying to the hypocrites, to the scribes, to the Pharisees, does she not deserve to be healed on the Sabbath day? When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her, and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. He says, there are six, six days of the week for working. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, you hypocrites, each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox and your donkey from the stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? What Jesus is saying that is that he doesn't want us to be hypocrites. Jesus doesn't want, doesn't want us to pray for one thing and to preach one thing and to pray for things that are really pressing in our lives. And then when he delivers persons who are in need, persons who need a new and renewed hope, he doesn't want us to be hypocritical. He doesn't want us to say things like, that's not on the program for today. 
Someone is suffering. Someone is sick. Someone is ill. We have to learn that wherever we are in our own situations, that we have to straighten up. We have to um, rid ourselves of pride, rid ourselves of those things that constantly plague us and understand that when we come into the house of the Lord, when we come into the presence of God, we have to go forward and help God's people. Don't think that it's always about you. I can't think that it's always about me, how I'm feeling, what I want to say, what my announcement is. I have to be mindful that there are times when we come together that somebody has a greater need than I do. The Lord replied, you hypocrites, you works on the Sabbath day. And what he's saying is that you do what it is that you want to do. This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released, even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things that Jesus did. The truth is about the Gospel of Luke that there are three more accounts, two more accounts, three in total. Three accounts of where Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. And I dare to say that Jesus was trying to make a point, not just for then, but even for now. To, for us to have an understanding that when we straighten up and when we don't think about ourselves, when we give God the praise, there is so much more that he can do among us as we gather together to praise his name. There are times when the Lord will change up our program. There are times when the Lord will change up the things that we want to do or the things that we think we should be doing. And there are times when he will call people out, individuals out, who need a specific blessing for a specific time. And this woman was one of them. This woman was a great example of a person who needed a blessing. If the young people who helped me this morning would come back up with your spoon, if you don't mind. Great. Here's my third spoon here. She was about okay. <laughs> no problem. I had another spoon here with me, but I had three smaller ones. We'll wait until she gets back. So, you know, Jesus had a lot of things to say. Can you bend your spoons for me one more time? Make sure it's bent. And I'm going to use my big spoon here, and we're going to say that that one's Jesus, okay? So I have a few things that I want to read to you, a few scriptures, and I'm going to read this scripture. And when I read the scripture, I want, is it Francesco and, tell me again, David. Francesco and David, I want you to straighten your spoon. I'm stalling a little bit, waiting for my third spoon. But if she doesn't come, that's okay. All right, Francesco and David, you can stand right here in front of me. Come on, right over here. Make sure your spoon is bent. And then just hold your spoons up so that everyone can see. There are times in our lives when we have bad situations. Maybe not like the woman who was suffering for 18 years, but situations that are nevertheless, they are plaguing us. Things we're worried about. And Jesus has a few reminders for us when it talks about worry, when it talks about not worrying that Jesus will take care of you. One of these, he says, in Acts, the third chapter, <coughs> Francesco, I want you to hold your spoon in front of everyone, then. <coughs> and as I read this scripture, I want you to straighten that out, okay? All right, I'm going to start reading, and then you start straightening your spoon. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Hold your spoon up. Good job. So, David, I want you to bend your spoon. They're going to give you a workout. Good job. <laughs> and as I read this scripture, David, you're going to straighten it out. Francesco, keep holding your spoon up for me. Good job. So, David, Isaiah says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. That the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Here's my third spoon. We'll wait for you. <laughs> We don't mind. You're holding up your straightened spoons. <coughs> so I'm going to need you to bend your spoon once more. Good job. And as I read the scripture, you're going to straighten it back out, okay? All right. Ephesians 1 and 7 says, 
In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. If the three of you would, hold your spoons up. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our protector. Jesus is our provider. And what we have to understand as Christians, whether we're young or whether we're seasoned, we have to understand that Jesus is always the person who we can rely on to touch each of our situations. Jesus is always the person that we rely on when we're feeling down and when we're feeling bent over. He is the person to rely on to straighten ourselves up and to give him praise in the midst of whatever the situation is. Today is only a reminder. The woman who had an infirmity for 18 years is only a reminder to all of us who might be going through something personal, physical, spiritual, that Jesus is still the answer as he was then and as he is today. And it's also a reminder of us as the Christian community to not be hypocrites like the scribes and the Pharisees, but to be mindful that Jesus sends persons our way so that we can heal them by the power of his Holy Spirit that he left here for us and that we can readily use to help the lives of someone else. If you would give my three Ben Over Spoons a hand for helping me this morning. And the word of the Lord is just that, for us to remember that God is good. And that he knows about all of our troubles and all of our circumstances and situations. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the word of God this morning that's just so plain. And even though, Lord, you speak to us sometimes in such childlike circumstances, we know that you speak to all of us as one. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to hear from heaven this morning. And we ask that now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would touch our hearts, that you would touch our minds, that we might leave this place and do those things that you called us to do as the body of Christ. We ask all of these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. God's people together again said, Amen. So most of us have been asked at some point to do that exercise, be it in Sunday school or Bible study, where you have to come up with words that describe God. So as I was getting ready for this week, I thought about that, and I think I came up with some pretty descriptive words. I'll bet you could probably think of even more. Words like awesome, almighty, powerful, compassionate, creator. Deliverer, provider, healer, gracious, holy, merciful, omnipotent, redeemer, and restorer. God is all these things and more, but just being able to describe him with some great adjectives, that doesn't mean that we really know him. Our praise song today is really a prayer which asks God to reveal himself to us. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, I want to see you, means that we want to experience God, His very presence. We want to feel Him, connect with Him, and recognize Him in our lives. And we want to reflect His image, because it's not only about knowing Him, but about seeing who we are in Him. Paul writes in his letter to the Ephesians, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called his holy people who are rich and glorious inheritance. Let's pray before we sing um, the praise song today. Father, you are so many wonderful things. Our hearts and minds can't even begin to grasp all that you are. Words alone, they can't contain our worship, and so we praise you with our overflowing hearts. Pour out your power and your love upon us and help us to see you, to know you, and to experience you as we lift our hearts in worship. Amen. I think we've done this before, I think. Um, it's a short song, but um, it's full of a lot of, uh, a lot of, of prayerfulness and uh, just, a, just, like I said, a request for God to reveal himself to us. So let's sing it real prayerfully at first, and then we can open it up and, um, and really, really praise God. Thank you. I always forget that.
children, Lord, so that we can hear you, so that we can see you, so that we can go about this life doing those things that you called us to do, to draw all men, women, and children close to you. Again, we thank you for the opportunity, and we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 We will now prepare for our time of tithes and offerings, if you would prepare yourselves for that.
Amen. Amen. Um, I just want to say thank you to you, First Reform of Saddlebrook, for your hospitality. Today was a beautiful worship experience. Um, thank you, Francesca, Ruby, and Gazelle. It was beautiful for the praise team. Um, it's been a beautiful Sunday morning. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who will present us faultless and blameless before the throne of God. God's people together said, Amen. 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 Have a wonderful Sunday. Amen.